This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I use Live Boolean with a Nano Mesh subtool? So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up, and I just have this example file here loaded in. Now the question is asking about using the Live Boolean preview mode, and also the subtool Boolean Make Boolean Mesh with a subtool that is a nano mesh. So in my example file here, I have a cube, and then directly below that, I have a nano mesh subtool. So this nano mesh subtool, if I go to my tool palette and then come down here to the nano mesh area, has nano mesh active. And if I turn on show placement, you can see that I just took that cube and I duplicated it to make a new subtool. And then with that subtool, I then applied a sphere across all the polygons on that subtool. And then in here, I turned off show placement, and this is what I got as my nano mesh tool. Now, when I have nano mesh active, and if I turn back off solo, and I have that subtool in subtractive form, and I have live Boolean turned on, you'll see this is the result I'm getting. So I have that main cube, which is coming in as a positive shape, and then it's currently giving me a preview of the nano mesh subtool as a subtractive element. Now let's say I'm happy with what I have here in terms of that subtraction process, and now I want to convert it to true geometry. So I come over here to the tool palette, I then go to the subtool area, I come down to the Boolean area, and now I'd simply click make Boolean mesh. Now you'll see when I do this process, I'm gonna get this little warning. So it said the Boolean operation has completed, but there are errors. And if I come back up to the top here to locate that process result, you'll see this is what I'm getting. So not exactly the same thing I was getting in that preview mode. Now the result I'm getting here is accurate in terms of the Boolean process. And it's happening because if we go back to our nano mesh tool, you'll notice that I had that show placement turned off. So this subtool here consists of that cube and those sphere objects. So both of these models are contained in this subtool. So when the Boolean process is going through and taking that initial cube shape, it's then subtracting these spheres and also the cube, and then that is why I'm getting this result. So we're subtracting the cube and the spheres at the same time, and the Boolean is having a difficult time trying to process that and giving me this effect. So in order to get a nano mesh subtool to work with the live Boolean system, we first need to take this subtool and convert it to true geometry. And to do this, we just need to come down to the nano mesh area here, and then go down to the inventory area at the bottom, and then click one to mesh. Now, if you have multiple nano meshes applied to this subtool, you're gonna to have to click this multiple times. But if you only have one, like I have here, just clicking this once is going to convert that nano mesh object now to true geometry. So now you'll see my subtool contains the box, which was originally used to place the nano meshes and all those sphere elements. Now, if I get out a solo, you'll see this is what I'm getting with the live Boolean preview. You'll see I'm getting nothing. And this is because those cubes are in the same space in the world and they're crossing each other and out. And this is why we're also getting an issue when we generated that live Boolean result. So in order to fix this, we just need to go to that subtool that has those spheres and we just need to delete the cube portion of it that was used as the base for our nano mesh properties. So I'm gonna turn on my polyframes here so you can see that there are two different polygroups here. So you should have your initial base shape will have one polygroup and then all the spheres should have another. So I just wanna come through and make only the spheres visible. So I'm gonna hold down Control and Shift, which is gonna give me the Select Rectangle Brush, and then I'm gonna come across the spheres and click. And this should now hide that cube base that we used for placement. And after that is hidden, I can now go back to the tool palette and go to the geometry area here, and go down to the Modify Topology, and in here I can click Delete Hidden. This is now going to delete that cube shape from the subtool. So now if I turn off my polyframes and get out of solo, you'll see now the live Boolean result is giving me what I want. So I have just the original cube shape and then it is only subtracting those spheres from that nano mesh subtool. Now that this is set up correctly, I can go back to my main tool. I can now go back down to the 
tool, subtool, boolean, make boolean mesh button here and click that. This is now going to give me a result. And if I come up here, I should now have a object that now should be what I was looking for. So I'll have the cube shape there and then all those little spheres are now deleted out of it. And if I turn on my polyframes here, you will see that the topology is only changing where those parts intersect. So there is my resulting mesh and the resulting topology for using that nano mesh object and subtracting it from the cube. Now I'm gonna go through quickly and do this process again, just from scratch, so you can get an understanding of how to do this, because there is some really powerful stuff you can do using nano mesh and the live Boolean system. So I'm just gonna restart ZBrush here quick. So after ZBrush restarts, I'm just gonna go in the light box here and make sure I'm in the project tab. And then I'm just gonna select the DynaMesh Sphere 128 and just load that in. After this loads in, I'm gonna turn off floor and also turn off perspective. And then in the tool palette, I'm gonna scroll down to the initialize menu here. And I wanna create that cube object. So this cube object here, I wanna change the resolution sliders before I click the Q cube button here. So I'm gonna set my X res to five, Y res to five, and Z res to five and then I'm gonna click Q cube. Now, once this is created, if you had these resolutions set at a higher value, you may wanna unify your cube here to the world to make it the scale that ZBrush likes. So I'm gonna go back to the tool palette, go to the deformation menu here, and I'm just gonna click unify, and then just zoom out a little bit. And now you can see if I turn on my polyframes, I have a cube and I should have five divisions on each side. So now after I have my base cube here, I now wanna to go to the subtool palette and in here I wanna duplicate this. So this is the initial shape I want and now I wanna create a nano mesh subtool that will allow me to place those spheres on the mesh. So I'm gonna come over to the subtool palette and then come down here and click duplicate. So now I have two of those cubes in my scene. And for the time being, I'm gonna to come to the top cube subtool and just turn off the eyeball icon so I only see the bottom one here. Now after I have my cube ready to go for the nano mesh process, I need now to select an insert mesh brush and then convert that insert mesh brush to a nano mesh brush. So to do this, I'm gonna come over to the brush palette over here and open this. In here, I'm gonna locate the IMM primitives brush. And if I select this brush here, you'll see this is gonna load in an IMM brush and you can see it contains all these primitive shapes. So I'm gonna take this IMM brush here and I wanna convert it to a nano mesh brush. And to do this, I can go to the brush palette, and then go to the create area. And in the create menu, you'll see there's this create nano mesh brush button. Now what this button is going to do, it's going to look at the IMM brush I've selected. It's then going to create a new Z modeler brush. And then it's going to take all those IMM parts and embed them into that brush so they can be used with the nano mesh function. So I'm gonna click this create nano mesh button here. It's gonna process that brush. And you can see now I have a new Z modeler brush and this contains all those parts. Now I next wanna select the sphere that is contained with this brush. So I'm just gonna come across the top here and click to make sure the insert sphere is selected. Now, since I created this Z modeler brush from that create nano mesh button, if I hover over any polys on my model here, you can see that the action is already set up for insert nano mesh a poly. Now I wanna change the target here from a single poly to all polygons. So I'm gonna hover over the poly here and press spacebar to go in the Z modeler poly action menu. In here you can see the insert nano mesh is the action that is selected for poly. And then in target, I wanna change it from a single poly to all polygons. So now if I come across any of the polys on my model, and if I click and drag, it's going to apply that nano mesh sphere across all the polygons on the mesh. So now you can see every polygon on the cube here contains a sphere. Now next, what I need to do is go to the tool palette and then we come down to the nano mesh area and open this up. You can see in here that nano mesh is now active and I currently have one index. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna turn off this show placement, which is going to now hide the cube that was using as placement here. Next thing I wanna do is I wanna change this offset. So by default, this is going to put those spheres right on the surface of every poly. And I want them to embed a little bit. So I'm gonna change my Z offset here from one to zero. And now that should embed into the surface there. And now next, I wanna go back to my subtool palette here and I wanna enable that top subtool, so my original cube, so now it's visible. 
And then with the nano mesh subtool here, I want to set this to subtraction. And then now I want to come up here to the live Boolean button and enable this, which is going to enable the live Boolean preview. When this is enabled, if I turn off my polyframes here, you can see that ZBrush is now going to process my subtools. So it's going to look at my top subtool, which was that cube, and this is set to that positive shape. And then it's going to look at the next subtool, which is that nano mesh tool there, and this is now set to subtract it. So I'm getting this preview result on screen. So you can see I have my cube, and now all those spheres are cutting into the cube. Now that I have it set up and working with the live Boolean, I can now go back to the tool menu, make sure I have that nano mesh subtool selected, and go back to the nano mesh area here, and now I can start changing some of the modifiers. Now, a cool thing about nano mesh is that you can modify all these sliders over here, and you're going to see these results happen in real time. So if I change my size slider here, I can start distorting those spheres and making them larger or smaller. And since they're doing this subtractive shape, you can see I'm starting to get some really crazy results on my model. So now instead of a cube, now I have this kind of shape. I can also start playing with the patterns down here at the bottom. So if I come over here and say set my tiles to three and three, and then start changing the patterns here. You can start to get different patterns from that nano mesh as well. And these are gonna cut into that sphere. I'm gonna change this to two and two. So there we go, like that. And I can scroll through these just to see what these are gonna look like. If you have any of these that you like, I can then even tailor them again with the size here. And now I have like even something as crazy as this happening on my surface of my model. So this nano mesh ability is gonna allow you to come through and play with any of those nano mesh shapes. And since we're using the live Boolean option, instead of adding those shapes as a positive function, it's going to allow us to see them cutting into the surface of that cube mesh. So once you have the sliders set to your liking and you're happy with them, you can come down the inventory menu here and click one to mesh, which is going to convert that index to true geometry. Now you'll notice we're getting the same thing that was happening earlier since we had that placement mesh on that subtool there. So it's the placement mesh is in the exact same position as our original mesh. So our model is vanishing. So what we want to do is go to that subtool we had and I'm going to activate solo so we can see it. I now just want to separate the spheres from that cube. So to do this, we're going to hold down that control and shift to get our select rectangle brush and then just click on one of the spheres. And so that should now only show us the spheres in our scene. And now we can go to the tool palette and then go down to geometry and then go down to modify topology and do a delete hidden. So now only the spheres should be left on this subtool. And now if we get out of solo now, we should now see our result correctly. So we've converted that subtool from that nano mesh to true geometry. We then removed the placement mesh that we're using for the nano mesh, which was that cube. And now we should only have the spheres that exist in that tool. Now we can come back up to our main subtool here. We can now go down to the tool subtool Boolean area and click make Boolean mesh. This is now going to process. And when this is complete, we can go all the way back up to the top. We should have a new tool created. And this should now be true geometry of our Boolean result. And if we turn on my polyframes here, you can see that the tessellation has stayed the same for the sphere objects, and the only area where you're getting triangles are the areas where those shapes intersect. So you can see now I've created this as a geometric form inside a ZBrush here, and this is now true geometry, so I can go through and start dividing this up, start sculpting on it, and I could even send it out for 3D printing. So that is the quick rundown on how to use nano mesh with live Boolean. So the main thing to remember is that if you want to use the live Boolean system with nano mesh, you first must turn that nano mesh object into geometry. After it has been transferred to true geometry, you can then process it with the tool subtool Boolean make Boolean mesh option. So if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing!